Good afternoon folks, welcome back to Higher Chemistry. Um, this is the section which is incorporated into kitchen chemistry that I'm dealing with today, but I'm a bit old fashioned so I'm not going to incorporate it into the slightly woolly kitchen chemistry definition, the SQA. I'm just going to hit you with a hardcore chemistry. We're talking about uh, oxidising alcohols today. I want to cover terminology and I want to cover the two reactions which leads us on to the third outcome which are two brand new homologous series that we're going to introduce to you today. Uh, two terminologies as well, two different uh, phrases. Well, not quite different phrases. It might be, it depends whether you've heard of it before. Anyway, stop rambling, hey, and let's move on to terminology. Okay, you've probably come across these uh, terms before. If you've done Unit 3 stuff, uh, then you certainly will have done these terms before. Unit 3 stuff is defines these two in terms of movement of electrons, but this is the organic section, the better one, in my opinion. So we are going to define these in a very different way. We're going to define it in terms of the oxygen to hydrogen ratio in a molecule. Let me show you what I mean. So if we have some ethanol, I've got my ethanol dog here, who's a good boy. Um, and if we have a look at the oxygen to hydrogen ratio in this molecule, we're talking about one oxygen to six hydrogens. Uh, now, oxidation is defined as increasing the number of oxygens or decreasing the number of hydrogens, but not changing the carbon skeleton in any way. So that is the organic definition of oxidation. If you're right, you can probably work out, because these two are opposites to each other, you can probably work out what this is, but we'll come back to this. Uh, now let's have a look at uh, let's have a look at what we're going to do to this poor little dog here, and if we're going to oxidise it. So let's bring along some oxygen. Excuse me, just two seconds. I'll get some. Okay, here's a here's an oxygen atom that just happens to be handily in the vicinity. It's come from an oxidising agent, and we will also look at the oxidising agents you're expected to know about, along with their colour changes in the very near future. What could this oxygen do? Well, if you have a look at the dog here, you'll find that there's a hydrogen and another hydrogen here attached to this carbon. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop them off. We're going to rejig uh, my oxygen dog and it's going to look like this. So we've stolen these two hydrogens away off the molecule. They can join up with this hand in hand, run off to the sunset and form water, which leaves uh, what was ethanol as uh, this molecule now. Hmm, quite different to before. It looks like this now. Double bond to an O, oops, and a single H. Now, if we look at the oxygen to hydrogen ratio now, uh, and this guy here, the oxygen to hydrogen ratio is still, uh, so O to H, um, it's still one, but now we're down to just four. So if your maths is decent, you'll realize that a quarter is larger than a sixth. So we have increased the oxygen to hydrogen ratio. This is, I'm going to come back later on in the video to what we form here, but this is obviously a brand new homologous series. It's got the functional group of the carbonyl. That's what C double bond O is called. Um, and we'll come back to what these are called in the very near future. The good news is we can actually do the same trick again in a slightly different way. We've got another oxygen atom here. And what we're going to do is we're going to incorporate it um, between this carbon and this hydrogen. Let's do that. And we end up making this. So if we go again on oxidation, uh, we can have two carbons. Sorry, get the other way around. There we go. Two carbons. Uh, double bond O and an OH. Now we didn't quite do the same reactions before. We actually stole away a hydrogen and this hydrogen here before to leave this behind. But in this one we're actually inserting oxygen into the molecule. But if we do our ratio one last time, the oxygen to hydrogen ratio is now um, 2 to 4, which is the same of course as 1 to 2. So you can see that during oxidation, we'd be able to oxidize this molecule here, which is ethanol, of course, to, uh, I'm not sure what that is, but I'm hoping you can recognize this. If you've seen a video on carboxylic acids, 
So we can actually turn alcohols into carboxylic acids via an intermediate by oxidizing. So that would be the first of our reactions today. Before we go on to address this mystery homologous series, I must lodge that in my head so I don't forget to do it, I'm hoping that you can also see that reduction would, of course, we have the same oxygen to hydrogen ratio. This time around, would it be either removing oxygens or increasing the number of hydrogens in the molecule? And of course, you could start with a carboxylic acid. I should have done that arrow in red, by the way. I'm so sorry. Sloppy, sloppy, sloppy. You need a better internet chemistry teacher. I could have kept the color code that way because we can, of course, go backwards and backwards again. If you have a reducing agent, the good news is the SQA don't need you to know any reducing agents, so we'll just leave that for the meantime. They tend to go this direction here. That's the most common one, but be aware you can also go in reverse, and that would be reduction. But we're probably focusing mainly on oxidation today. So I said I wanted to cover terminology. That's a new version of looking at oxidation and reduction in terms of the oxygen to hydrogen ratio of a molecule. I wanted to look at the oxidation reactions, and I wanted these two sort of overlap in the same Venn diagram, really. Um, in fact, let's let's just do that just now. Let's have a look at oxidizing primary alcohols. You notice I started with ethanol because you can only get primary alcohol with ethanol. So I was chickening out a little. Let's just replay that for a second. I'm not going to make you watch me draw it, though. So here's a run through uh, that last reaction again, slightly more detail, guys. We start with ethanol. We end up eventually, after two stages, making ethanoic acid. Ethanol's formula, CH3CH2OH. Ethanoic acid, of course, CH3COOH. Sometimes, sh sometimes shown as CO2H. Don't let that put you off. So what about this guy in the center? These are alcohols. These are carboxylic acids. This is our new family. As I said, that is the carbonyl functional group, if you haven't come across that yet. If you have a look back at my video, this is, this is why these are called carboxylic acids, combination of the carbonyl and the hydroxyl group. Um, these have a name. These are called the aldehydes. Aldehyde. Spell it right here. There we go. These are called the aldehyde group. Um, and the name for this is still eth because it's got two carbons. An because there's a single bond between the carbons, not ethene. Uh, ethan, uh, and we end it with al. So ethanal is the name for this particular molecule. Its formula would be CH3 um, CHO. Um, or you could combine it all together to form um, C2 H4O. Uh, general formula, CN. H2N plus 2, O. Oh. Are we done? Yeah, that seemed very quick today. Nah, because I said there were two homologous series. Uh, let's have a look at secondary alcohols and tertiary alcohols. So if we have a look at a butan 2 all here, whoops, that way around according to my diagram. So there's butan 2 all. Oh, get your hydrogens in, hey, honestly. Can't get the staff these days. So butan 2 all. Um, along comes an oxygen. Can it do the same trick as before? It can steal the hydrogen away and attached to this carbon is another hydrogen. So yes, it can. So uh, let's uh, do that. And we end up with we end up with this molecule. So on paper, that looks like let's on paper, we steal away uh, that hydrogen there, that hydrogen there, they join up with the oxygen, they create water, and you're left with this. Now, um, that is not the same homologous series as the aldehydes. Yes, it does have a carbonyl in it, very true, but the carbonyl is now in the middle of the chain. It's joined to two other carbons, whereas... In the aldehydes, if we can just rewind for a second, the carbonyl is on the end of a chain, is joined to one carbon, and that's it. So this is our second new homologous series. These are called the ketones. Um, how do we name them? Well, this is one, two, three, four, so it's but. Single bonds between the carbons, so it's butan. 
and then the ending is on. So this is called butanone. We should, I suppose, be more specific and say butan to own. Uh, although that's being really pedantic because you can't get butan one own because that would be butan al, different homologous series. And you can't get butan three own because it would be the same one flipped over. But there's nothing wrong with being pedantic, to be honest, because it gets you into the habit of putting that number in just so you don't lose an easy mark in the higher paper. So that is our second homologous series, again caused by oxidation reactions, this time of a secondary alcohol. Very quick reminder, uh, primary alcohols can be oxidised to form once to form aldehydes and then oxidised again to form the carboxylic acid. Um, secondary alcohols, you can't play that trick because there is no CH here to insert another oxygen into. So that is the end of the game. And if you're bright, hopefully, you can pause the video and tell me what's going to happen if I try and oxidise a tertiary alcohol based on this mechanism up here. The answer is nothing. Tertiary alcohols do not want to join this party because you can remove that hydrogen, but there are no hydrogens on this, so therefore the reaction just does not happen. Happy with that, guys? So, terminology, oxidation and reduction. Oxidation is an increase in the oxygen to hydrogen ratio, either by adding more oxygens or by removing hydrogens. And... Um, the oxidation reactions of alcohols, primary alcohols. Uh, if you're not sure what primary, secondary and tertiary alcohols, go and watch my alcohols video. Primaries can be oxidised once to make this brand new homologous series called the aldehydes with the carbonyl group. And that is their formula. Oh, sorry, that reminds me. One more thing. I want to go back and look at ketones for a second. And they can be oxidised a second time to form carboxylic acids. Secondary alcohols can only be oxidised once. And now the carbonyl group is in the middle, not at the end. So it's a different family called the ketones. You can oxidise them a second time. Tertiary alcohols don't, don't want to play at all. Let's have one last look before we leave at the difference between butanal and butan-2-on. Let's have a look at their formulas. There's actually two differences I want to point out. Here's uh, butanal. I don't need to name it as butan-1-al if you want to. You knock yourself out. And here's butan 2 on. Now, a quick glance at them means that I'm hoping you will spot they are isomers of each other. They have got the same formula. C4, H, if you want to stuff it all together, C4, H8, O. Although we would tend to, traditionally, that's if you do with the molecular formula. Um, it's the sort of thing the SK will do because you can't tell the difference between these two. Not by looking at that. You could tell it by looking at the shortened version, I know. Because the shortened one would be CH3, CH2, CH2, and then CHO. That would be butanal. The shortened version of this would be CH3, CO, CH2, CH3. But this does not give away any clues. However, I'm hoping that you realise that if you were to try and oxidise these two chemicals, this one cannot be oxidised. Because you can't oxidise it a second time. This guy, on the other hand, yes, you can oxidise it and it would form butanoic acid. My least favourite chemical in the whole world. Because it smells of vomit. Because it's in vomit, I think, if I remember correctly. So, there you go, guys. Uh, should I stop the video there? No, I won't stop the video there. I'll just from the last chapter in the video, which are the chemicals you can actually use to make this reaction here, the oxidation reaction, actually happen. Right, guys, uh, taking a tip off my wonderful art uh, teaching wife here um, to use the colours uh, of the actual substances. The SQ want you to know about four oxidising agents at a higher level. They want you to know about these two, which are used to turn um, alcohols into uh, aldehydes, if you can, and then into carboxylic acids. Um, these two tend to be used exclusively on aldehydes to turn them into carboxylic acids. So you're, if you want to turn, say, ethanol into ethanoic acid, then either of these two would do the job. If you want to turn propanol, actually, if you wanted to test the difference between 
propanol and propanone. Remember, you can oxidise the aldehyde, you can't oxidise the ketone. So if you had an unknown solution, you didn't know if it's an aldehyde or a ketone, you'd test it with either of these two. And if it's the aldehyde, it will change colour, it will oxidise, and if it's the ketone, it won't want to play. Can I just remind you that tertiary alcohols will do not a sausage with any of these four chemicals, because you can't oxidise them. Um, so I'm looking for a coppery colour. This is as, probably as close as I can get. Copper 2 oxide. I should have written the formula. I'm a muppet. Cu. Oh. If you are able to use this to oxidise something else, this itself will give up that oxygen and you end up with just pure copper um, at the end, which I'm going to try and show you as this. So that is solid copper. In other words, you get a change from black to sort of ready pink. Good fun in the classroom. Usually results in nice green flames coming at the end of the test tube. Um, acidified dichromate is the same colour as iron brew. I doubt very much if anybody outside Scotland's watching this video, but if you don't know what iron brew is, go and Google it. It's terrible. It's a terrible Scottish national drink, full of sugar. Um, but it's a very bright, intense orange colour. And if you do this, you end up, if it reacts, it being acidified dichromate, it will oxidise your alcohol, but this will also change from CR207, which is the formula of the dichromate ion. It's a complex ion. We don't use it very much. They're really nasty. It causes cancer. Um, and it's got to be acidified. If you're not sure why these hydrogen ions have to be here, go back and watch my video on redox, which at the time of talking, I haven't made yet. But when I make it, I'll put a link. So you end up making a different uh, chromium, which is a lovely blue-green colour. Basically the colour of the Mediterranean Sea. That's meant to be blue, sorry. You get a bluey green colour, um, and that way you know that it has worked. When I say has worked, I mean an oxidation reaction has happened. If you see these colour changes. So copper changes from black copper oxide to ready pink solid copper. This changes from orange dichromate to blue green solution. Don't worry about which iron you've actually made there. Fellings solution. So these two guys are used to tell the difference. These are used to tell the difference between aldehydes and ketones. Remember, aldehydes oxidize and ketones don't. So fellings is actually copper 2 ions, and you change into copper 1 ions, uh, which precipitate out as a brick red precipitate. The SQA precipitate, sorry, can't spell and talk at the same time. Um, the SQA want you to know these chemicals and their colour changes, guys. Last of all is the most fascinating one, which is Tollens solution, sometimes called Tollens reagent. And it's silver one plus ions suspended in a solution. You can't normally get them. They're unstable unless you combine them with ammonia. So uh, come back at advanced higher and I'll tell you why. Um, but the really cool thing is, because you're doing an oxidising agent, this is this is oxidising something else. That applies to all of these, by the way. But that means these themselves get reduced. Go and watch my video on oxidising agents and you'll see what I mean. So if you reduce that, you're going to change it from 1 plus to nothing. In other words, you end up making silver metal. And the really cool thing about this is the silver metal forms on the inside of your glass container. And it gives you a silver mirror on the inside of the beaker. I did it just earlier on this year with my guys. So you get solid silver deposited on the inside uh, of your beaker. A very uh, cool way of making reflective beakers. So these are your four oxidizing agents. Those are the color changes. Hopefully you can see it, unless of course you're color blind, in which case, sorry about that, which is why I tried to describe it as well in words. Black to ready pink for copper oxide, orange to bluey green for dichromate, Fellings starts as blue and ends up as a brick red precipitate. That's because that's copper one hydroxide that's precipitating. And last of all, Tollens is colourless to silver mirror. Go and have a look at Niall Red's video on that. I'll probably put a link in the doobly-doo down below. He does some excellent stuff. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.